Canada, here we come. Getting up here was a bit of a challenge. Amazing, amazing. It's just that beautiful. Today is a nerve wracking day and exciting day because we are crossing the border into Canada. We've done this once before and we are looking forward to going back into the beautiful country of Canada, but we are a little more prepared this time for what to expect. Um, the crossing into Canada is actually really rather easy. It's coming back into the United States. It can sometimes be a little nerve wracking, a lot more strict than coming into the United States, but we have our passports and we have our kitty papers that show they're up to date on all of their information so that if they have any problems with the pets, we're good to go. And we're ready for Canada and Banff and Jasper and Vancouver and all of the beautiful Alberta and British Columbia. So we just have to wrap a few more things up around the RV, make sure we are ready to go. And today will only be about a two and a half hour drive. So not too bad. Canada, here we go. once you cross the border. All right, so we're in Canada, and uh, to be honest, it's always the easiest thing in the world, getting into Canada. Of course, they're gonna ask you some questions, make sure you're not bringing any guns in here, or anything like that. Um, super easy, man. They're always the nicest people. After they get done with the official stuff, they always give you a bunch of cool uh, advice on how to get into parks and this and that. So if we hadn't have uh, got all the advice about Banff and Jasper from the guy, it probably would have taken us five minutes. Yeah, super easy, super easy. And we are going to Cranbrook. That's our next stop. We are on our way to Banff. We got into our free campsite last night really late, around 10.30 I think, and the sun was just setting, it was rainy. We just pretty much slept, woke up, and we're hitting the road to get to Banff. So we don't have any reservations in Banff, um, but we were able to secure a spot for tonight. There were some cancellations, and we got an electrical site, which is awesome because now we can charge.
recharge our batteries and um, kind of like reset because it's been so rainy and overcast we really haven't been getting much charge with our um, solar for our batteries. Tomorrow is the 4th of July so we'll see if we get another spot in Banff if we'll go to the overflow parking. We're not quite sure what the solution is going to be but we're going to have a good time tomorrow. There's friends that are in Banff as well that we're going to hopefully meet up with and we're excited to explore. Just made it to Banff. That was a beautiful drive in. And uh, we're trying to make it to our campsite right now. This town is uh, kind of nuts up here in Canada. In the national parks, they usually have like a, a town center. And downtown Banff is jumping. What's going on? So we just pulled up to Banff and we went online earlier today and just frantically kind of found one opening and reserved a spot. And we weren't sure if we were going to get another spot because supposedly this is like the craziest time and it is 4th of July week and a lot of Americans come here. But we pulled up, no reservations, and we got a spot until Friday. So we get three nights here. We do have to move one site tomorrow morning but then we get to stay at that site for two days. So we're pretty much gonna get two really full days of exploring Banff and it's supposed to be sunny and it's the 4th of July and I'm just so excited. <laughs> we woke up really early this morning so that we could get to Moraine Lake. So they want us out of this spot by 11 a.m. We were really hoping we would wake up early and the person that is in our new spot would be gone, but they're there. We are going to go to Johnston Canyon instead, which will still be awesome and beautiful and really fun. But it's the 4th of July, we have a spot, we're in Banff, and it'll be a wonderful day. amazing it was, it was pretty freaking rad yeah it was a great introduction to Banff it was a perfect easy hike through Johnston's Canyon nice little warm-up yeah well you start out in this this pave the whole way up until you get to ink pots trail you start walking on the wall of the canyon with this glacier fed stream uh, beneath you and the catwalk like juts out away from the canyon sidewall it's, it's crazy cool yeah it was such a unique hike and there were seven waterfalls so you technically are walking to an upper fall and a lower fall there those are like the big highlights or attractions mm -hmm. there was plenty to see the whole time it was really beautiful the upper falls was rad because the catwalk actually again went out in the middle of the river and then you're just staring up at the upper falls it was freaking wild and we were told by someone walking along the path that there is like a secret quote unquote secret yet there was like 20 people nah. down there there's a spot he that said. you can kind of jut off to mm -hmm. and you actually get to go down into the river bed and you can pretty much walk up to a waterfall and actually like touch the glacier Stand waterfall behind the thing if yeah. you want to it was wild it was really beautiful so yeah. uh, we're not going to put the exact spot because you're supposed yeah. to stay on the trails you can find it if you really want to and we do have pictures below in our blog as well Definitely go to Johnston's Canyon if you're going to Banff. Really worth yeah. it. Quick hike. It only took about three hours round trip, although we did not do the ink pots. But that was with us taking our time, taking oh, pictures. Oh, yeah, a bunch of pictures. If you show up after 8, you're not going to get a parking spot anywhere. There was two lots for this one uh, trailhead, and they were both full by the time we got done with our hike. Yeah, we arrived around 8. 
8 15 and the parking lot was about half full by the time we arrived and it wasn't too crowded on the trail which was nice because you're on a boardwalk so if there's a lot of people it's really hard to get around and not as yeah. fun so early is better so we're going to our friend's campsite tonight to celebrate the 4th of July. Even though we're in Canada, they're American, we're American, we want to celebrate, but with sparklers because we are in a national park. We don't want to burn it down or get a ticket or arrested, you know. So we're being as compliant as possible, even though I'm pretty sure this is probably still a no-no. And we're going to grill out and have a good old 4th of July. So today was supposed to be Moraine Lake Day, and when we got to the Lake Louise area, which is where Moraine Lake is, it was actually closed, the road to Moraine Lake. We're not quite sure what's going on because I think it has been open for the summer season, but we definitely can't get to it today. So we decided to just keep driving a little bit further, go to Lake Louise, and everyone said you want to get here before 8 a.m. to get a spot. We're here at like 8.30, and legit the entire parking lot is so full and we've been driving around for about 15 minutes trying to find a spot till no luck yet. So if you're coming to Lake Louise, get here well before 8 a.m. to hopefully get a spot a little bit easier than we are. And we'll do a, a lovely hike today once we find a parking spot. <laughs> So we still couldn't find a spot. We drove around for about 30 minutes and we ended up just seeing like yellow lines and we're just like, we're just gonna park there. I know you're not supposed to, but <laughs> screw it. And we ended up asking the attendant, it's cool. But we did find out about Marine Lake that they close the road if it is full. So when we drove by and saw all the road closures, it's just because we got here too late. 8 a.m. is not early enough for Lake Louise and Marine Lake. No, if you are going to Marine, I'd recommend getting there before seven. If you want to drive up, yeah. The overflow is the best way to do moraine right now. Yeah. Yeah. You, you gotta head back down towards the village, okay. turn right on the Trans Canadian Highway, and then take your first exit called Overpass. Like a massive car pass when you're right. Yeah. And so, when did they open the road yesterday? Seven thirty uh, at night, you said. No. Yeah, but there was a hundred car lineup waiting to get in. We had to sit there for about fifteen minutes just to get out. Uh, at seven thirty p.m. Oh my god. Yeah. It was okay. insanely busy. Okay. Summertime. Hmm. Um, yeah. <laughs> so I'd recommend shuttle for Moraine today, honestly. Okay. Yeah, man. Unfortunately, the national parks in Canada don't do a great job of informing you about like activities and hikes. We even, um, when we asked for a trail, lots. yeah, parking lots, really just anything that's going on within the park. I think they're much more targeted for like having tourist activities since they're cities within the actual national parks. They're a lot more developed than like United States national parks where you're kind of in the middle of nowhere, there's no connection. America's national parks, they like give you activities to do, suggested hikes, if you have a day here, this is what you should do. There's none of that help or support here. To figure out what happened with Moraine Lake and the road being closed, I had to go to a personal blog where they gave me that information the National Parks website didn't even speak to it. So unfortunately, you're on your own for figuring out what to do when you come here and they really promote you like buying a map if you wanna figure out what trails to go to. So do your research beforehand. Uh, blogs are really helpful for coming here, but it's just, it's just different in the United States and we weren't really prepared for that. So figure out as we go. <laughs> We're hiking the Plain of Six Glaciers Trail today uh, here in Banff and you can see Lake Louise behind me. It's a freaking beautiful uh, glacier fed lake which is why it's so turquoise blue. And there's a ton of people but it doesn't matter because it's just that beautiful. 
we're gonna go up the side of this mountain and there's actually a tea house up here uh, that's supposed to be insanely gorgeous. Uh, there's actually two tea houses that are close to Lake Louise. Lake Agnes has another tea house. That one's a little more popular. It's right off of the big beehive trail. This trail is crowded, so I don't even wanna know what the other trail is like. Made it to the Plain of Six Glaciers Tea House, but it's pretty rad. There's avalanches falling off the glacier behind us. They live up here five days a week and hike in and out once just to come work here to feed us. That's pretty amazing. And uh, lo and behold, they had veggie chili on the menu. Dude, Liz, are you in love? Wow. There's not too many days that you can say you've taken a hike and that you've walked through six different glaciers as you were hiking. It's stunning here. I mean, there's nothing like this in the lower 48 states, 100%. And it is just incredible to be here next to these incredible glaciers. They're having avalanches, and there's a tea house, and waterfalls, and wildflowers and I'm in heaven. Heaven, huh? Heaven. Look at the glacial lake. Look at the glacial lake. I mean. It doesn't get literally any better than this. This is pretty phenomenal. This has been a long day. And we got a decent hike out of here. At least it's downhill, so it'll be easier, but we're gonna head back to the trailer. Possibly take a shower. Maybe pop a brew, but it's time to relax. We're at Moraine Lake. So, the camera girl almost fell in the glacier lake. Oh, yeah. Soaked her foot. And now we're about to do an eight mile hike. seen a lake so blue and it being completely natural this is easily one of the prettiest places I have ever been to it's gorgeous look at the color of that lake it is really cold though and I know this because as I climbed here through some logs I did not make <sighs> the smartest move so now my shoes are wet my socks are wet we're gonna have to go to the gift shop and see if they have any socks for me because we have a big hike ahead of us but Lake Marine is beautiful. And even though the parking lot was closed down, we thought about taking our motorcycle and they let us in because we were on a smaller motorcycle versus a car, even though it still shut down to all cars. So we didn't have to take the shuttle and we got here in the middle of the day rather than having to wake up really, really, really early like we have for all the other places. And overall, it's a lot less crowded than Lake Louise. For example, I think because the parking lot just shuts down pretty much for the whole day, you don't get nearly as much crowds. There's still people here, still people here, but it's not overwhelming. 
gift shop to the rescue. I officially have socks again and can put my shoes back on, which is very nice. And they're cute, they have bears. See? Uh, what's that thing in the plastic wrap right there? Oh, in a Nomino bar. Nanamo. 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 Thank you. Nanamo bar. We're on the Larch Valley Trail, which is super cool, but you got to go up like, I don't know, a kilometer or so of switchbacks. I think it's a 1,500 uh, feet, or is it more than that, elevation gain? Oh, this is tough today. Yeah? Yeah, it's tough. Yesterday was, I thought, steep. We didn't have to take any breaks, and this is like our second or third break. Oh, no. this is the first break. Well, we were filming the other breaks, okay. but I was breaking. But look, a huge glacier and Lake Marine. Huge glacier, Lake Marine. Uh -huh. Awesome. Okay, the mosquitoes will eat you alive if you stop for a second. We gotta keep going. We made it to the point that we decide which hike to go on. Canada, Canada parks style. There's no more. Uh... No information. Yep. All right. Well, we wanted to go to Eiffel Lake, but it's about as long as Larch Valley, which is seven miles total. And this one, I think it says someone wrote 3.7, but I don't believe it. Because it, Sentinel Pass is the shorter one. So, <laughs> one side of this is heads, one side of this is tails, one side we go that way, the other side we go that way. Sentinel Pass, Eiffel Lake. Line is okay. Eiffel Lake. Okay. Eiffel Lake, Sentinel Pass. Okay. Ready? Eiffel, Eiffel Lake. Lake. Sorry we don't have any footage of the Eiffel Lake gym at the end of the trail. It got really freaking windy and started to rain. So we packed up all of the electronics and threw ponchos on and just booked it back down the trail to get down the mountain because we didn't know if it was going to turn into like a serious thunderstorm or what. Anyway, uh, today is moving day out of Banff and uh, we're packing up and we found something we want to show you. Liz decided to look underneath the trailer for some strange reason and uh she goes i think we got a leak and i'm like what do you mean we got a leak like you're 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 crazy we just drove through a bunch of rain it's probably just the tires slinging water up underneath the underbelly of the trailer so we moved from there drove into tunnel mountain in banff and it's dry here no more rain and lo and behold the entire underbelly is sagging. You can totally notice it. Whenever you slap it, it sounds like it's a waterbed, you know, half full. And uh, Liz actually noticed there was a piece of the underbelly peeling down from, dun, 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 dun. you don't know about this yet, but we've actually repaired one leak on the trailer already uh, back when we were in Idaho Falls. So we're assuming that this is the same leak or something caused by, you know, the repair that was done uh, whenever we had the first repair done they split the underbelly into three different sections when from the factory it came in one whole section well the weight from the water is actually pulling those sections apart and is basically going to allow more moisture and yuck to get into our underbelly but it doesn't really matter because it's wet inside already yeah no fun so there's that Mm -hmm. Pretty disappointing that we have potentially another leak or a reoccurring problem. Either way, we're probably going to have to go back to Idaho Falls. So instead of heading forward to Vancouver, Canada, we're probably just going to zip right back into the United States to make sure we can get this rectified as quickly as possible, make some phone calls and figure out what the issue is and how to get it fixed. Yeah, well, I mean, none of the... Um... We called a bunch of local shops anyway, even here in the Banff area in Canada and then into Vancouver 
and they're all booked for repairs out for like two weeks. So I don't know. I'm pretty confident that it's not a another water leak, but we'll see. Either way, our experience at Banff was still absolutely incredible. It's such a spectacular place. There's so much to do, and it's just breathtakingly beautiful. Yeah, man. If you want to make some like lasting adventure memories with your family, you have to get to Banff. It's freaking awesome. This was easily in our top five places we visited so far. I can't wait to come back. It'd be so cool to see it in wintertime, too. So if any of you have done that, we would love to hear what your experience was like coming to Banff in in winter. All that snow, I can't even imagine. That sounds cold, man. I don't know about that. It sounds beautiful. It does sound cold, though. (laughs) If you liked this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, click the subscribe button and then ring the bell right next to it so you know every time we put out a new video. So that's all we have for you this week from Banff. We're actually going to be cruising into uh, the Glacier National up here in Canada. And then we're going to head into Washington. Mm -hmm. So hopefully uh, we can get this leak situation or potential leak situation rectified between now and then. Uh, But that's the direction. And we'll see you next week. Ready? So heads. Eiffel Lake. Eiffel Lake. Sentinel Pass. Here we go. I can't remember the color of this. Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, seriously now. <laughs>